Probably what is the long lasting memory, which is the clatter of the tins, the smell of the bakery. You'd come in and there'd be three or four bakers working in here. They'd know you. It's such a warm and welcoming place to be, full of good spirit, full of lovely smells. And it's just that stereotypical kid walking into a baker's. But when you know it's your own family bakery, and you just pick up six hot cross buns and then you're off. We'd often stay over at Granny's and Granddad's house that during Easter because Mum and Dad would be so busy they'd be here all the time. You'd just see hundreds and hundreds of hot cross buns and that smell of sort of the bun spice, you know, the spice for the hot cross buns. Somebody finishing them. Yeah, a kid in a sweet shop. But your own sweet shop. Yeah, Brilliant. Books, um, I'll just give everyone an eight in here as well. I'm not going to teach 56 million people in the country how to do it necessarily, what are six people at a time, but I'm definitely going to be doing my best to get the ball rolling so that they teach someone else and they teach someone else. Food, we're in a working bakery as well, that's the important thing to know. When I was eight or nine years old, um, I had £10 saved up from helping Dad at the uh, Royal Bath and West show, and I had a t shirt which said, Get Fresh with Your Local Baker written on it. And, um, I bought from Dad 10 pounds worth of shortbread and some current buns and set up a stall in one of the garages on an open day. A village, we used to have this thing called Village on View in All Western. And there'd be tractor rides and you'd get five, 10,000 people visit, descend upon this village. I mean, it was insanely busy. And people would walk around the bakery and seeing the donuts being jammed and the bread being made. And I made 20 or 30 quid profit. And then it was our school fate in June and I paid my mate Ten pound to run my donut stall and bought fifteen quid yeah, worth so of donuts off of Dad, board, and I made camera. sixty quid. And you're supposed to donate all your takings to the school. But I donated half to the school and then half to myself. I got up to about two hundred and fifty pound by the time I was about twelve. You got your very expensive mixing bowls. You have your very expensive bread mixers. Your hand should be cupped slightly just so that it can fit along the side of the bowl. Now, I've do... been fascinated with the bakery business my whole life, but never decided, never really wanted to join the family business. The moment I joined the business is the, the moment when I had my sort of epiphany DJing in New five, Zealand, where I um, was stood times, looking out at six or seven hundred revelers, like that, you know, listening to the music and just put my headphones down. And uh, to be honest, I couldn't, I, I could have took that a stage further, but it doesn't just doesn't get much better than that. You know, you're in the middle, another country, DJing, people going mad. But I knew then that it wasn't for me for the rest it's of my okay. life. So we'll give you a bit more, because we don't want to be stingy, because the cameras are there. If you weren't, I wouldn't let you have this one. <laughs> be counting them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can kick those out afterwards. <laughs> All right. So you notice he's a browner. When I use I spice... pretty much reached a peak and was ready and mature enough to join the business. You're going to probably mix yours around 10 or 15 times and then work out that it might feel a little bit stiff. And I'll have to come around, give you a little poke and a prod and a squeeze, and then see how your doughs are forming, OK? So... We were quite early on with the, the farmer's markets and we talk about the slow food movement. The farmer's markets are like central to that. This is a farm which has turned into a bakery. We are in a farmhouse which to used to be a farmhouse. Now the bakery has taken over. We only just took 95 years to diversify and go out and do markets, you know, from day one. That's wicked. Yeah, that's a lovely consistency dough. But I don't it turned out that we are the only bakery really... At, in our area that was really using local ingredients and was able to cope with the demand that we were having. You just have a bit of a bird bath, okay, what I call it. So you just get um, a nice bit of flour and then just as if you were really thoroughly washing your and we got up to 20 or 30 markets a month. People asking us to go up to London and all this sort of stuff. And all I wanted to do was trade within an hour of the bakery because I felt that over an hour wasn't local. smooth dough, just pushing. That was really where it started for me. And then that was a success. So then I took on my first shop in Blandford. I need you to have some friction now. I don't want you to be going like that and just letting it slip around your hand. Get on and watch this. This is one little bit like my first little market stall went on and I got my first another little thing when I was nine years old and the, the same pattern is repeated. <laughs> went up for markets, another shop, and then we opened the, the, de the deli down in Sandbanks, Camphor Cliffs down there. And that's really oh, taken so off. Try and score as close as you can to the letter B into your um, bundo. And then we'll know what's what. Especially that's a lush o dough there, really good. Like good food is not exclusive. That's my whole point is it doesn't matter um, Who you are you should be entitled to good bread for sure and bread being a star for life. It's you know, I can I Could go on with all the cliches <laughs> These are the girls on the right 
and that is bloody impressive. Whoa. Yeah, well done, gang. Take it out, put it on the table, say, I made the bread myself. And everyone will be like, <gasps> ooh, uh, and they'll forget you've only spent 50 pence a head on it because <laughs> you made the bread yourself, and that's the key. Yeah. Yeah, you're no, all part from here, yeah. yeah. yeah well, that's twice careful. you've got them right then, isn't it? Because that yeah. is, they're really well, good. I don't mind things like this. It's, it doesn't feel like work, so I don't mind being taught by him. I think he's a very good teacher, so yeah. So Gemma's going to do hers. No. So, so what's it, short on the bit? Table first then, uh, Short yeah, bit. short brick now aggressively it. throw it towards you. Three. Yeah, well done. Now get on the table quick and take yeah. those heads. <laughs> yeah. Gemma, poor thing. Uh, we always vowed we'd never work together. I don't want to wake up thinking about bread, go home, talk about bread, say to Gemma, how did your bread sales go? Bread, 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 bread. Go to sleep, dream about bread, wake up, and then the day goes on again. Lovely. Now, you all got to tap me on the shoulder if I took them out by quarter to four, OK? OK. But there are moments where It'll be 5 to 11 at night and I'll just be drifting off. And, uh, oh, did you remember Mrs. So-and-so's loaf of bread or something? And Jen would be like, shut up, go to sleep, you know. So, yeah, it, it'll take a bit of time, but by, you know, a few years' time, we'll have forgotten all about our normal life. We'll just talk about bread. i do this, I would imagine, quite easily at home without me holding your hand. Although I've thoroughly enjoyed holding everyone's hand this afternoon, <laughs> I must say. So, yeah, I, I couldn't be more pleased. And, and a very, very nice group, too. Very, very much enjoyed your company, I must yeah. say. Great fun. Yeah. So we pay us later. Everyone happy. <laughs> 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 I'm very happy because I've got two trays of biscuits in the oven and it's really sweaty yeah. crowds. You can have my way. Yes, and I rescued them too. Really? Bloody goodness for that.